This weekend, the leading mayoral candidate for the city of Los Angeles claimed her home had been broken into and two guns stolen from a secure location in her home, but that no other valuables were taken. There's something that just doesn't seem to add up about the story, but no one's really asking questions, so we will. Democrat Karen Bass has served six terms representing California's 37th district, which is in the city of Los Angeles, and she also happens to be the front runner in the race to become LA's next mayor. She's running against billionaire Rick Caruso, who has campaigned heavily on a recent crime wave in Los Angeles, which Bass referenced in her statement, saying of the burglary, quote, it's unnerving and unfortunately it's something that far too many Angelinos have faced. Now, homes of members of Congress are rarely broken into, and if they are, you'd think it would get pretty extensive news coverage. But maybe not surprisingly, both MSNBC and CNN have completely ignored the story, while Fox News covered it in the way that you'd expect. She's been saying over and over again, crime is under control, uh, it's no issue, until, of course, it happened to her. All right, look, the politicized media does what they do. But regardless of how they're reporting, we focus on facts here, and there are a lot of strange and unanswered questions about this story. The police have not officially confirmed the investigation, but they released a statement saying that they are seeking assistance regarding a burglary in Bass's neighborhood that occurred at the same time as she claimed, though they didn't mention the congresswoman by name. They released this image of a suspect that was captured by a security camera in the same neighborhood where the congresswoman lives. The police statement noted, quote, on September 9, 2022, a suspect entered an unoccupied residence and removed property from the location. According to the victim, there are several valuables, electronics, and U.S. currency in view that were not taken. Now, this is consistent with what the congresswoman publicly claimed, that her home was broken into Late Friday evening, two firearms were stolen despite, quote, being safely and securely stored and that no other valuables were taken. I don't know what happened here, but can we at least say out loud that this story doesn't appear to make sense as it's currently being told? And the image released shows a suspect wearing a mask outdoors, seemingly looking straight at a security camera during the light of day. So that person presumably enters the congresswoman's home, ignores the cash and valuables available to them, and just opts to take the time to get two firearms that had been locked safely in a Brinks lockbox and took nothing else. Joining me now is media skeptic and host of the, <laughs> the With the Benefit of Hindsight podcast, John Ziegler. John, thanks for coming back on the show. Appreciate it. All right, what do you make of this? Well, that was a great analysis, Dan. And uh, I would like uh, you and your audience to do a little thought experiment. I would like you to think about what would happen if Donald Trump had preemptively declared before the police ever made a statement using his name that the exact same facts that you just stated occurred at one of his homes and that uh, that suddenly two guns registered to him and that word is important registered uh, were taken nothing else was and that that photograph was all the evidence we have that this actually happened now, like you i don't know whether or not this happened i don't know what the motivations were for those involved in this but this story is so bizarre that i find it impossible to believe that there's not more to this story and i would add one other thing about the the photograph you mentioned it's out it's outdoors it's in the neighborhood that why do we not have the person leaving but he's not wearing any gloves either so so why would you go into the doing this and and not wear gloves i, I happen to own a firearm in my house which i'm pretty sure is smaller than karen bass's house i could not find the firearm right now if you paid me a thousand dollars i have no idea where it is how did this person know where to find it, know how to get it, and why were they not interested in anything else? Right. Well, that's, that's the key question, right? Is even if you're particularly interested in the firearms, right? Let's say that you say to yourself, I got to have a couple of guns. I need to find them. Uh, you take the time. You figure out where the, the safe is. If you got all the money sitting there out in the open, you've gotten the, taken the time to go break into a safe you might as well just take the change with you. I mean. Right, and th those questions are important, but the part of this that the media is really blowing is that they're leaving out the context that you already mentioned, 
which is this is less than two months from a heated mayoral election where Bass is leading, but not by a substantial margin. Her opponent, Rick Caruso, has so much money, Dan, that I don't even live in Los Angeles, and my 10-year-old daughter, Grace, knows his name and can quote from his commercials. So she could very well be very concerned about some unimaginable scandal that could be related to those guns. That is a theoretical possibility that the news media is not even contemplating. And I have to say that when we have someone who is as important to the left as a liberal Democrat black female who's winning the race for mayor in Los Angeles, the second largest city in America, the media has lost all credibility to be trusted that they will ever ask well, these kinds of questions. And the reason I think that, that it's a fair question to ask it is the way that you framed it, right? Which is imagine if the, I hadn't thought of it that way, right? But the first point you made, imagine if this had happened with Donald Trump and he said, oh, you know what, one of my, you know, some little chateau I have where there's no security, uh, someone broke in and just stole my two guns and left all my money and valuables. Everyone would be like, what? Wait. It would have made it would have made the golf speculation of last night seem like child's play. Yeah. There, this would have been this would have been the grandest conspiracy of all time. And all I'm asking for, and I know all you're asking for, is for someone to at least ask some basic questions. Like, how did this person know where the guns were? And why have we not had any semblance of an arrest as of yet? And why is there only that one photograph? Uh, from a security camp. I can't believe that she doesn't have security cameras everywhere. There's an alleged, an allegation of forced entry, but where's the evidence of forced entry? If there was truly forced entry, we should be able to see a photograph of that. But none of these questions are being well, asked. And, and, there, and there may be answers to these, but because no one's asking, they're not being sort of, they're not delivering this stuff up. So as John pointed out earlier, there may be answers to all of this stuff, but I don't think enough people are asking questions such that People are being forthcoming with answers. John Ziegler, as always, thank you for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.